So which of these variables do we know for you? We know x, we know t. Yeah, what should we plug in for delta x? 9,000 9, meters. Oh, no, we have to go 1,000 meters. 9,100. So first of all, remember that, what does this symbol stand for? Change in x. Yeah, the change in x or the displacement. Um, and again, what's up, what's, what is your initial position in this problem? 900. 9,000? 9,000, yes. That's right. Why are we treating this like your initial position and not this position over here? Well, remember, we're doing a constant acceleration problem, but you didn't even, uh, when did you start accelerating at this point? The reason why we're treating this as the initial point is that this is where you started accelerating. So the first time that this acceleration applies to you is when you're at this point. Of course, this was really your initial point in the race, but you didn't start accelerating with constant acceleration until you got to here. So this is what we're treating as your initial point for the purpose of these five variables. Um, so what is going to be this person's displacement? Oh, Sorry. Um, displacement is going to be... How do you find displacement? Uh, see where your initial final minus initial. Yeah, so what would final minus initial give us here? A thousand. Oh, we want to catch up to the leader or to the finish line? You want to catch up to the finish line, so isn't it? Thousand. You want to, well, what the question is telling us is you want to catch up by the finish line, right? So that means that right at, at this time, you're behind the leader. But at the finish line. So it's 900. At the end, the problem wants you and the leader to be in the same place. Uh, so that should be x final minus x initial, right? That's how we find displacement. So what's x final going to be? 9,100. Something's uh, we're not something we're not understanding. Something that's a problem. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Where where will your final position be? We want final position at the end of the race, the final position. Right, well, let, let's stop and think about that. Um, so the question is asking us for what acceleration do we need so that we catch up by the finish line? Um, so, well, so it, it looks like you're maybe figuring out this distance. But after you go this distance, you won't be caught up. The, other, the, uh, the leader will still be in front of you. So the final position is when you catch up at the finish line. So that's why it's 1,000 meters. Right. And then what's your initial position? 9,000 meters. Right. Uh-oh. I hope that. So what do you get as the answer? We have final is 10,000. We have final is 10,000. Ah, 10,000. Thank you. That's why the... Yeah, that's why we said 1,000. <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> Huh. Somehow I was sure that you weren't saying, so I guess I was totally, you were saying 1,000? Yeah. yeah, and that's why you started guessing random. <laughs> what, was, what was going on? Why did I think that was wrong? Maybe I thought it was in hundreds. I don't know. All right, sorry about that. All right, sorry. All right, so you're absolutely right. Um, 1,000, uh, 1, except should that be positive or negative? Positive. So it's always a good idea to watch out for that sign there. I'm sure you're giving the wrong answer. Okay, so that's positive 1,000 meters. All right. Uh, any other numbers that we can plug in here? Uh, 2,100 seconds. Oh, no, this is for the other. I think what we did yesterday first, we solved the velocity for the leader and well, then applied it to him because he was going to go at the same the initial because no, they've been us. running at the same time at the constant speed, both of them. But he told us that it's just zero for the VI. That's what it was. We didn't figure it out. That was the hit that was like they're both starting at the same Yeah, but and so you can consider that they cancel out and you can just consider the VI to be zero. Oh, you know, uh, now that I see it, so this problem actually is, uh, I guess, underspecified. They're not really giving us enough information to know what the initial is here. So let's see, so that's a little tricky. Do we know what V final is? No. Do we know the time? So there's a bunch of numbers that we don't know here. That's right. Uh, how about, do we know any numbers for the leader? Yes, we know the distance and we know the times. So yeah, so their distance should be? 900. 9,900. 
Yeah, yeah. so. It's the leader. Nine, yeah, so. You have 900 bucks if we have 1,000. Okay. Yeah, so what should this displacement be? I was saying 9,100 because we have to see. Ah, okay, you're doing two different parts. That's right. So what should the distance be when we're just considering from here to here? Oh, that's going to be 900. Right, okay. Positive 900. The velocity and time we don't quite know. All right, so there's a lot of numbers that we don't know here yet. So you're right, we're going to have to figure out these velocities. So that's why if we calculate how much he's, because he said they say that he's at a constant speed. Right. So if we figure out how much he did in 35 minutes, then we can see how much. Right. So they gave us enough information to figure out how fast the leader was going. But what that means is we're going to have to do the leader all over again. So this represents the leader going from 9,100 meters to 10,000 meters. And this over here represents the leader going from 0 meters to 9,000 meters. OK, so what numbers do we know for this por uh, portion of the leader? We know that's 35 minutes or 2,100 seconds. 2,100 seconds, good. We know his distance. Which is? 9,100 meters. Oh yeah, so I should have said this is from 0 to 9,100 meters, good. Uh, would that be positive or negative? Positive. Because uh, we should be assuming that they're all moving in the positive direction to make our life simpler. So now it's pretty easy to solve for this velocity. Four point three meters per second. It's four point three meters per second. I'll round that up to four point three. Did that come out positive or negative? Positive. And is that what we would expect? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, does this number carry over to here? Uh, for him, yes. Yeah. How do we know? Because they told us to assume that the leader maintains a constant speed throughout the race. So this would give us here, this would be 4.3 meters per second. And now there, there's something pretty clear that would be helpful to do. Now we need to figure out how much time it would take him to reach the end. Yeah. Once you know two of these variables, you can just go ahead and find out the third. So we might as well go ahead and figure out time. Even though the problem wasn't asking us for the time, maybe that'll be helpful to us. Let's go ahead and figure out that time. What did you get from that? Seven. So you got about 209? Yeah. Okay, so rounding off, we can say the time is about 209 seconds. So then we have 209 seconds to go those 1,000. That's so right. now we know our time. Good. So notice the key thing here when you have multiple objects uh, or multiple frameworks is you have to keep asking which number from one framework carries over to the other framework and which one doesn't. Well, since you guys are, um, you, this, these two points represent the same point in time, and you need to catch up to them at a certain point in time. So both you and the leader, are, um, you have to catch up to them in 4.3 seconds. The leader is going to finish in 4.3 seconds, so you need to catch up to them in 4.3 seconds. Well, now we know two numbers. We know that we need to know three numbers up here to finish, so we need one of these two numbers. Well, we know that we're going the same speed that he is at first, so the I is Right. Now, actually, I don't think the problem told us that we were going at the same speed. Oh, I thought it did. After all, if you were going at the yeah, same speed... You, can, you find yourself 100 meters behind the leader and moving at the same ah, speed. Ah, I didn't read carefully enough. <laughs> okay, very good. So, I'm not doing so well on this problem. All right, so you're absolutely right. They told us... So you can't have been going the same speed the whole time, because if you're going the same speed the whole time, you'd be in the same place. Uh, but yeah, right now we're going at the same speed. So what number should this be? 40. Well, that should be 4.3, but the T should be 209. Thank you. Another mistake. All right, that's right. Time should be 209 seconds. 
Yeah, so the velocity brings up to here, and the time. Now we can use right. the equation because we have three. Right. There. Okay. So I said before that they didn't give you enough information in this problem with us because I wasn't reading carefully enough. They did, they did give us enough information to find both this speed and this speed. I'm like just referring to this table is okay, right? Like to know which equations to use. Yeah. Um, there are some things I think you should memorize in this class, but you don't need to memorize those kinematics equations. You can just write those on your cheat sheet. Um, last time we saw how the first two kinematics equations you should be able to figure out if you forgot them because they're kind of common sense. They're not the first two, but uh, what we explained, yeah, the first one we saw was just common sense. Yeah. The final velocity is the initial velocity plus the change in velocity. And yeah, the second one is kind of common exactly. sense too because it's just saying that the displacement is the average rate times the time. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that's not a big important thing to memorize. What you should memorize is the kinematics variables and the units. 